Rangers. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode. I'm excited because we're going to be talking about an industrial networking success, success story. And we, we went straight to the to the source on this one. So today I have with me Mr. Ron Thompson, who is the controls and HMI development manager at Lampy and Malthus Lumber Company in North Carolina. And he has a really interesting story. So when, when working with our solution architecture group, you know, they had a, a lot of issues going on with their network. And when I, I got to hearing all these little different details, I'm like, we need to just bring Ron on and just have him share this story. So Ron, welcome and thank you for taking time with us today. You're welcome. I'm excited, man. I'm very excited. So maybe for the listener out there, first of all, for, for Lampy Malfers, what, what are you guys producing? What, what are you, in the end, what is your final product? Our final product is five quarter by six and five quarter by four decking. And decking that's, board. That's all we make. Okay. Making a lot of decking board. I got it. So it's a probably a pretty good market right now too, right? It's for the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. It comes and goes. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, thank you first of all for what you do. We we definitely support all the manufacturing uh, on Eco Why. So maybe set the stage. There's some some listeners out there who may be inside of an industrial plant right now, and they're facing some industrial network issues. What what were some of the things that were going on at Lampy? You know that 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 caught your attention. Well, when I first came on board, our network was pretty primitive. It just been continuously added to. Uh-huh. We had a bunch of uh, routers, wireless routers, and dumb switches, putting cameras on online and stuff like that. Right, and right. It was just a lot of problems because we were always having to reboot stuff. Mm-hmm. Was it so? Was it kind of like Frankenstein together, if you will? Pretty much. I mean, you never <laughs> knew what brand router right. or switch he's going to run into. No kidding. So any standards on that stuff? So no, well, it doesn't sound like there's any standards where, where there some of the stuff, like, I guess you get like for a, a home type system or did you try to go the industrial route? I mean, what, or was it a hodgepodge? It was hodgepodge. Really? You just really? had to over the years. Right. Right. Yeah. Just to kind of make things work. Right. Yep. And that's pretty much what it was. Just barely working. Yeah. Yeah. Now was it the, the network, center the hub was it all in one general location or is it really spread out throughout the mill uh we have what we call an it closet where most of yeah. the hardware was at except for okay. the you know the the external switches and stuff right right i got you so i mean when you start thinking about all those different nuances of the network what were some of the biggest problems that were that were popping up was was, was the line going down or anything like that due to the network well, we have uh, some locations that use the wireless extensively, you know, for their data. And mm-hmm. they go offline a lot of times, and we'd have to figure out what to reboot. It's just, it was a headache. Right, right. Any video over your there, wireless? The video, the, the brand of camera that we used then uh-huh. uh, had to go through a PC. Okay. Well, the PCs okay. were on the network, but the cameras were going to the PC. And then we started adding IP cameras, you know, that okay. tied directly to the network. And then right. that just kind of exacerbated the problem. Oh, okay. So is that when it, it really came to fruition? Okay, we got to do Pretty something. Pretty much, because the, the video takes up a lot of bandwidth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got you. So I guess we, it was kind of limping along until that video component now where were those video components added were they added as part of the production i would just i just literally finished listening to a podcast talking about video and manufacturing so i'm curious how were you guys using the video the video cameras are are aimed at different areas of the machinery so uh-huh. the operator can see because they can't see a lot of it you know from oh. where they're at so it's operator feedback type a uh, loop so the operator can directly see Right. You know, what's going on okay right. i got you now that is so that's a real time is any of that video being saved or stored or is it all just we're not know, recording watching? any of it okay okay it, we have the capability to but we don't do you think what, what is there ever been any talk about th- about doing that recording to be we've, able to look back we've talked about it a little bit i got you got you i mean I there's guess that's places all- where you're, 
if you're having problems with a piece of equipment, sometimes if you start recording, you might be able to help track it, track it down. Right. 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 No doubt. So, I mean, just adding that video component, I'm curious, how, how was that perceived from the operators? Did they, do they like that stuff or they're like, you know, get this out of here. I just, you know, you never know. I don't know. If they lose a the view, they let me know. They let you know. So Boy, they like it real quick. Okay. Okay, so they they find value in the video aspects of the of, of what's going on on the network. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mean that really brought out a lot of the issues. So then I guess at that point, what was that causing the network to 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 physically crash at times, or were we just losing data? Sections of it would just basically lock up. Oh, okay. And then you have to do what a like a hard reboot. reset or something. We find figure out which switch to reboot. A router or whatever. How'd you go about figuring that out? A trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It really is just by the fiery pants, right? Yep. Yep. Wow. Figure out which one it's going through and start from there. Did you ever? Were there ever any commonalities? Did you ever find like maybe this couple of routers or these couple of switches were the the, the 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 primary culprits, or was it just across the board? We did have some that. Uh, basically failed and those were pretty easy to track down right right i got you so i guess at some point then you needed to move into the assessment stage to really understand what was going on with the network and and to figure out you know how do you even move forward so how how did that look for you guys well we had a company come in and do the assessment and uh they when they installed the equipment initially Mm -hmm. You know, I worked with the, the guy that was setting it up some to, so I could learn how to move around in it and make changes and whatever. Right. And then, right. uh, we had already made the decision when, when we were putting the switches in that we were going to separate stuff out on the individual VLANs to limit the traffic, you know, uh -huh. especially for the cameras, because that just blows the system down real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So did they, did they help get those VLANs set up? Yes. Okay. Did you see an improvement with that? Immediately. Okay. And maybe just, yeah. if you don't mind, there may be some listeners out there. When you said VLAN, they were like, the what? So, I mean, can you, can you, <laughs> how would you, I mean, how would you explain it just to someone in the mill? It's what a virtual mean? network is what it is where you can only uh, manage switch. You can route your traffic. So uh -huh. it doesn't, you don't have collisions. Right. And that way it, it streamlines it and takes a lot of burden off of the hardware. Right. Right. So instead of running all that data through one central location, that VLAN kind of sets up a separate little area for that data to run. Exactly. Right. Virtual right. network. That's right. That's right. Kind of like a little suburb of the city. You know, we're yeah. not going into the city. We're, we're staying out in the suburbs and moving stuff around. Yeah. And, and with the managed switches, it, you know, you don't get to pick which door you go through it. Right. So you set your port routing up where it directs it. Right. Right. Absolutely. So dumb, Absolutely. Dumb switches. And I've, I've learned this recently with the dumb switch on a managed network, anything going through that dumb switch, all of your tags are gone. So it's right. basically back to square one. And when you say dumb switch, are you talking unmanaged? Unmanaged. Switch? Unmanaged right. switch. Right. So you guys made the decision to go manage switch to after, is that after your assessment? Yes. Okay. So they did before, the assessment and gave us recommendations. Right. Right. So before you had some unmanaged switches, it sounds like. Oh, Oh, we didn't I have any you. managed. I wonder how they got in there. Is it just through the years? Just, just, yeah, just, just through the years, you know, they say, well, we need this. So go out and buy a switch. At the right. Walmart or wherever. Right. <laughs> and, and I've learned, I've heard that where people just go to Best Buy, Walmart, or whoever, Circuit City. Well, I guess Circuit City yeah. not anymore, but no, back in the day, anymore. go to Circuit City, yeah. you go to those places, right? Used to be. And just, and just, you just need a switch and throw it in there. And that's what happens. I mean, through that assessment, were you able to, to get all that, that junk out of there now? Or do you feel like you have all managed switches or you still have some, some, some we, of that stuff lingering? We still have some, some dumb switches in there. Uh, right. We're gradually getting them out. Right. Right. And I definitely, I think the good part is now, at least you know which way you want to go when something does go out, you, you know, you want to go that managed route and you know how to set that, that, that switch up to, you know, maximize the efficiency and the right. performance and things like that. Right. 
Very it's cool. Very definitely cool. a learning experience. It sounds like it. So how long have you been doing the networking stuff? Just since I've been here. Okay. Now, how long <laughs> was that? Years. Well, Five years. Be six years in April. Okay. So this is a relatively new area for you. Exactly. Most, Do you like most it? of what I did before it was just industrial controls and HMIs and stuff. Uh huh. Now, do you like the networking component? I thought I wanted to learn it and be good right. at it. <laughs> Figure yeah. out real quick <laughs> with the other <laughs> stuff I got to do. I don't have time. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really hard, you know, when you spread because you have so much other responsibility too. But I mean, if, just hats off to you. I think just that you can even the information you're sharing here for a, a control industrial control type background that's impressive extremely impressive uh, like i say it was a learning experience i i could make it work but it wasn't uh optimal right 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 now is there an it department there at lampy malfors i'm trying to talk them into it <laughs> Well, hey, here's the good part. You didn't have the – we, we hear this a lot, Ron, uh, the IT, OT, those guys clashing heads. You know, the OT being the network on the plant floor and the IT being the network inside the business unit. And a lot right. of times those those guys don't like each other. But if you didn't have that IT group, it sounds like you were good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, right. so when it, when it came to that then, so that OT design, that was really on, on you and your group. Yes, Okay. Very good. Very good. So you had your assessment, you know, when you started looking at where you were going next, maybe walk us through what were the next steps of actually taking some action? Well, over, over the years, we've continued to add more cameras. So right. we were having to add more switches and stuff and I'd get them set up initially. And like I say, I wouldn't, it wasn't optimized the way I was doing it because right. I didn't know Right. Right. I got you. I want to call for help. <laughs> and is that when you kind of engage some of some of the, the solution architecture group for support there? Yes. Now, what, what, what was his approach? You know, when, when, when Kay came in and he's been on eco a few times, uh, to, to look at your network, how did you, you know, how did that process work? Just curious from your experience as the end user, uh, working with a solution architect that's, that's, season in networks you know what, what was that experience like for you well he's been a tremendous help because uh when before i got hit k in i could log on to a plc and i might be able to stay online for five minutes five hours you never knew we just dropped communication and uh that doesn't happen anymore so, I mean, I'm hoping, you know, I've worked with Kaya a lot in the past and in our, in our group coming in with, you know, eyes wide open, trying to really understand what your goals are. So was that somewhat of the approach that you, of, 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 okay, here's, here's what we're trying to do at Lampy and here's where we need support at. Is that a lot of those conversations where they generated that way? Yes. Okay. You know, I, I just tell him what, what we're trying to do, the end goal. Yep. You know, he's has to figure out our network itself, you know, right. to be able to work on it. Right. And you have to pay him in sausage biscuits. I know Kay, he likes to eat, you know, so, so <laughs> just, just, just take care of him that way. Right. <laughs> he, he, he's bringing me food. <laughs> I he's just telling got... him not to. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, because I mean, so you've you've made a lot of these changes. So I'm curious from the management standpoint, from 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 your boss and the plant managers and things like that. When you start looking at this, none of this stuff's free, right? No. So, I mean, so there was there any pushback there on 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 investment dollars and where we need to put money, or what were you give, kind of given some some free reign to because we knew we need to make these improvements. Uh -huh. Pretty much was given free reign. I mean, I, I would go to my boss with recommendations. And right now, you know, we've got a uh, a server that's pretty pretty hefty. It's, it's for Raid 5 system. Right. And we also have a, a network management PC just by itself. When I started seeing some of the dollars, I mean, after the initial setup was done, I mean, that was pretty expensive there. Uh, and then... 
with the recommendations that Kay was giving us on hardware, more hardware that we needed, I thought right. I would get some pushback, but I didn't. Right. And his comment, my boss's comment, which he's the uh, general manager. Right. He says, if the network goes down, we're down. Right. So yeah. He says, whatever we need to do. Right. Well, it's good. It sounds like the leadership was behind it and they saw the value, you know, what you guys are trying to do. But also at the same time that they have expectations that these investments are going to keep that plant running. Right. Right. And so, I mean, what were some of the enhancements? So you had this problem, the network was going down, it was taking your lines down. You made these investments in managed switches and some routers, it sounds like, and setting up the VLANs. What's, what's been the outcome? What's been the, 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 the post side of, of these investment dollars? Well, just the simple fact of setting up the VLANs made a big difference because that got all of the video traffic off of the, the office traffic. Right. And then, uh, we've, we've got, the uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's a pan to it, uh, edge. Oh, edge control. That, yes. That okay. monitors continuously. Yeah. That work and it shows you what's, what's breathing and what's not. Okay. And that, uh, I don't have a full grasp of that yet. Kay's right. working on me though. <laughs> Is that the, uh, the interview? Pat, yes. do it. Yes. I got you. I got you. So you got, you have that there. You're still trying to, to, I guess, adopt that into your practice of how you uh, uh, evaluate right. your network. Right. Okay. Okay. We also have a mesh network, which is on its own VLAN. Okay. Okay. The, so were you the mesh involved? Is just so you have full uh, Wi Fi around the mill. Right. You, you right. don't drop out. Right. So are you using a lot of Wi-Fi devices in the mill? Yes. Okay. Primarily what type of stuff? They have, uh, they have, uh, iPads out at the log sorter, which uh -huh. is next to the uh, server. Right. Uh, we've actually just installed some equipment that had, they're not iPads, but they're, they are a uh, handheld. Right. Uh, but most of it, we have, uh, the boiler manager uses his phone a lot to monitor when he's, even when he's at home, he can call into the, to his computer and then monitor the boilers and the kilns and stuff. Oh, so you guys have some, that's some, that, that opens up a, a whole nother area of, of remote access. So he, mm -hmm. so is that through like a, a VPN connection that he's able to, to get into that? Uh, he comes in on team viewer and then the, what he uses inside the mill is VNC. Okay. Okay. And then we've got uh, our admin also. I mean, right, the way our system is set up, initially, I wasn't able to get online with most of the processors, just certain few. Right, right. But I can get to all of them now, except for the old legacy stuff. Right. Have you found that to be helpful? Oh, yeah. That I capability? love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So you're not having to necessarily drive in it for everything. You can actually yeah, I don't do have, something. I don't have to get up and leave my desk most of the time. That's awesome. Now you just, you perked some ears right there with that comment. That's awesome. That's great. I know it upsets some people because I don't show up, but I can fix it faster that way. Right. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about for it's competitive as environment we're in. I mean, you're selling decking boards. You got to get them out. You yep. got to get them out quickly. So, I mean, that that's really where it's at. So I am curious though, any, any concerns or any areas of, of, uh, how, well, let me, let me rephrase the question. How are you guys addressing cybersecurity with this? Cause if you're doing remote access, do you have, is there, is there anything in place to make sure there's no cyber threats? Cause we see the stories all the time, you know? Right. Well, the Sonic Mall handle a lot of that, uh, that company that okay. manage them, they, they keep our backups all the time. We're right. Get back our servers and stuff up. Right. And Kay's actually steering me towards some more stuff to uh, help prevent that. Protection. I got yep. you. Okay. Now, Wi-Fi or just smart devices in general, you mentioned the iPads that the operators were using, some different types of, it sounds like operator-specific stuff. Any equipment out there that you're using that will be qualified as smart now, any, like, 
you know, smart overloads, VFDs. Are you pulling any of that type of data back to the PLC now yes. uh, over the network? Okay. Yep. Is that a, been a common practice? Is that fairly new? Any, any, any trying to just well, understand? I've, I've been doing it for years, even before I hired on here. Right. And, you know, I've added some different uh, data links to the drives to get more information out of them and stuff like that. Right. What what type? I'm just curious. What type of stuff are you pulling out the drives, or do you find value in? Current is probably the biggest one. Right. Right. Well, um, but I. I set up the data links so I could display it on my HMIs. Okay. You know, pull like the, the output frequency and the current, the right. voltage, bus voltage, uh, temperature of the drive. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we, we actually had a an issue with the drive that kept tripping on high temp. And uh, come to find out, the, the fan was blocked, plugged up, because it was in a kind of a dirty environment. Right, right. So well, at least we know the high temp alarm was working, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> you shut it down. <laughs> you know, I mean, so, I mean, sometimes we we joke at that stuff, but I mean, it's it's there. You were able to take that data, diagnose it, and then go find the problem. I mean, that's that's what it's about. Well, it, and that's what I tell my people a lot of times. You know, they keep complaining about it tripping out or something. I said it's it's protecting itself. Right, right, right. I used to get so tickled, you know, my first started going to these manufacturing plants and some of these guys would tell me how the overloads work. And I was, I was learning about motor starters and the, tr the traditional overloads with the heaters in them. And, right. uh, you know, you would just, you know, crank that dial up a little bit and just keep cranking up a little bit more. And, you know, <laughs> you don't, have, you know, you don't really worry about it, protection. You're just trying to get the motor running. I'm like, well, yeah. it, it's probably trying to tell you something here because it's tripping, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is good stuff. Good stuff. So, I mean, if you if you think about the whole journey that Lampy's been on, you it sounds like you've learned a lot through it. We'd love to give advice, you know, out there for our listeners. So, say somebody sitting where where you guys were several years ago with that network that's tripping out and it's falling down. What advice would you offer up? How how should they get started? And, and maybe what some lessons learned that that would help them along their 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 journey. Technology has come a long way in just a few years, and mm -hmm. in, in industrial networking, uh, managed switches is probably, probably the best way to go. Right. That way you can control what data goes where. Right, right. It's not so just you, broadcast. Yeah, yeah. So you really find a lot of value in the managed switches and, and how that, that has impacted your the production floor. Now that I know what you know about them, yeah. Right. I, I knew about managed switches, but I'd never used them. Right. Then also the VLANs in conjunction with that. It sounded like that was a big area for you as well. Right. And I I didn't know what VLAN was when I first started messing with this stuff. Right. Right. Now, have you centralized everything now? So it was, it was all hodgepodge. Is, is it all kind of centralized in one location in the mill now for your network center, if you will? Well, each, each machine center is going to have its own basically network right and then we plug into that okay okay so it's, it's kind of like different hubs throughout the plant but we do all we do bring it all back to the it closet to the main switch right okay. and it sounds like that that clause has gotten a lot better over, over oh it was it was a mess when i first started at least oh, yeah. i got, get, got everything rack mounted now Oh, so it's all rack man. That's probably it's all looking good now. Then it looks a lot better, but it's it's getting better. Right, right. Well, you know, slow and steady wins the race, right? You know, yeah. so that's <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's what I keep telling some of the mills I've been in. You know, they they want to run everything at top speed. Well, lumber is a variable, a big variable, and it's, yeah, you know, you're going to stop and start. And I said, slow it down a little bit, run all day. Right, no doubt. No doubt. Man, I'm curious, just, just out of curiosity more than anything outside of the network, you know, so supply chain, how's that been hitting you guys in the lumber industry? Uh, the part that's hitting us is uh, equipment, the electronics. Equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. It takes a lot longer to get switches and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mostly, mostly the electronic side of the controls and stuff, just about getting the hardware here. Right, right. 
Very interesting. So I mean, it sounds like log supply is fine. Logs are good. Yep. But that's good. That's good. Workers good. Mm hmm. Okay. That's yep. great. I mean, this, this last equipment that we put in back in uh, November, when the numbers were crunched, we could run it slower. Right. And a better uh, lug fill and the production would go up. Right. We didn't have to run it as fast. We do have the catch up capability if we need it. We don't have to run it that way. Right. That's very interesting. So how many shifts are you guys running? Just one. Production shift. We do have some uh, cleanup crew and maintenance crew at night. Right. Right. I got you. Very interesting. So, I mean, if you look back, if you could do anything different, what would you do on your, on the industrial network? I probably want to learn it more. Okay. <laughs> I just don't have time. Right. 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. And that's, that's when I reached out for help. Well, I think, and, and then that, I mean, that shows wisdom, you know, you guys knew that you, you know, you weren't, you didn't have that skill set directly in house and that's okay. But you know, you you knew where to go and, and it sounds like you were able to get a lot of help to get you, you know, the results that you need. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you just can't do during production. Cause mm -hmm. if you drop a link and it shuts the machine down, I think it will be screaming at you. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I am curious to give us some context of the time you know, from the start to, to where you guys were, has this been a, you know, a couple of year journey? Is this a couple of month journey? Like how, how long did you really take to get there? Right now, as far as the level of hardware that we have right now, it's probably five years. Okay. Okay. And we're still getting new hardware. Right. Right. So just, I guess the, the, the lesson there is, you know, be ready for the long haul or be in it for the long haul. You know, it's not an overnight fix and you take those incremental wins and you learn from them and you grow from there. Yep. Exactly. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Ron, we, we call it eco ass why my friend. And we, it's, and we always try to wrap up with the why at the end, I guess maybe give the why for our listeners out there for why having that robust, reliable network is so important. It's just like the general manager said, if the network goes down, you're down. You don't produce. I mean, everything, everything nowadays is network. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Well, you guys have been a, definitely a major success story, you know? So, I mean, for the people that are out there that want to, to learn more, we'll, in their show notes, we'll, we'll put the Lampy Malfrest website so they can, they can check you guys out, you know, but, and we'll put some resources as well on, on, on network assessments, you know, the way that we were able to try to, to really walk with Ron through this. So Ron, you got anything else on this, my friend? Like you say, be ready for the long haul. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The bigger your system is, the longer the haul. And ours has grown. That's right. Well, we're, just, we're, we're blessed to have you as a, as a, as a, as a partner and, and Ron, thank you so much again. I'm sure this has really helped a lot of people out there that are listening. Cause you know, if you're in the battle, it sounds like it seems like it's never going to end. So maybe you gave us some encouragement today. Nick, neat. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, Ron, I hope you have a wonderful day, my friend. All right. I appreciate it. You too. Hey guys, what a wonderful conversation that was, right? I mean, we learned so much from Ron about his industrial network. I mean, in that journey, it was amazing. I mean, from the beginning to the issues they were having to all the way that they did the assessments to the changes that they've made now, that is a true testament of what can be done if you take the right steps, the right approach, and you and you commit to solving a problem. So wonderful story there. So we hope that that brought a lot of value to you guys that are out there trying to figure out your networks and how to take them to the next level. Now, for our war stories, they're still coming in, and we still need them. So sh send us those war stories. Check out the show notes. They have links there to be able to connect directly with us for those. If you're liking Eco Ask Why, please share it with someone. You know, send a text message. Send an email. Whatever you need to do. Go to ecoaskwhy.com and just, and just share that out. Whatever you need to do to get it out there. Leave us a five-star rating. Write a one-sentence review. All those make a difference. So go out. Have a great day. Remember, keep asking why.